Okay, so you guys have learned most of the big methods for first order linear differential equations. So the question naturally arises, what happens if you have a differential equation that you can't solve? That doesn't fit in any one of those methods. That's where uh, Picard's method comes up or comes into play. So what happens if we cannot solve a differential equation? You guys already know one way to approximate solutions from last year. Any ideas? Last school year. We got nothing? Okay, so if we don't know, we can use Euler's method? That's what you said? Okay, so we could use Euler's method to approximate a solution. Now, because you all learned that last year, I didn't feel like we needed to learn it again. Is that okay? Is anyone super upset? Okay, will you get over it? Okay. Or now what we can do is we can use Picard's method. So we'll take a look at what is Picard's method and then do a few examples. Here's the idea. Consider that you have some initial value problem y prime is equal to a function of x and y, and then you have some initial condition y of x0 is equal to y0. Okay, we are going to integrate with respect to x. When we do that, we'll get y of x is equal to c plus, we're integrating from x naught to x, f, we've talked about this before, if x is within our limits, x can't be in the function. So instead of x, you'll use t. So it'll be t and then y of t, dt. Well, then you have that initial condition that y of x0 is equal to y0. So we're going to plug that in. We get y of x0 is equal to c plus x naught to x naught, because that's what we're plugging in for x, f of t, y of t, dt. This, we should be able to tell, is 0, which tells us that c is equal to y naught. So now what we have is that y of x is equal to y naught plus the integral from x naught to x of f of t, y of t, dt. Okay, so now where we go is we solve using the method of successive approximations. When you see that term, that means Picard's method. So oftentimes, the question will not say Picard's methods. It's going to say the method of successive approximations. That's Picard's method. OK, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to suppose that y naught of x is a continuous function that represents a guess or approximation. To the solution. Here's what you're going to do then. You're going to use that y naught to calculate y1 of x. Bless you. What's up above here? You're going to follow that. So that's equal to y naught plus the integral from x naught to x of f of t. Now you're going to use y naught of t because that's your initial guess or approximation for the solution. Okay, then what you'll do, then you'll calculate your y2 of x. 
that'll still be y naught plus the integral from x naught to x. This time it's f of t, y1 of t, dt. And then you'll keep going. So what we do is we obtain a sequence of functions. So you'll have your y1 of x, y2 of x, and you'll keep going. General form yn of x then will be y0 plus the integral from x naught to x of f of t, y of n minus 1 of t dt, in the case where n is at least 1. Okay, so you get all these functions and they'll get you closer and closer to the actual solution. And right now it seems kind of random, but we are able to find a solution oftentimes this way. It all depends on this y naught, x naught, and y naught of t. So our common practice, what's normally done is to choose y naught of x to be equal to y naught. We're just going to do an example so you guys can see how this works. You have the following initial value problem. y prime is equal to y minus 1 and y of 0 equals 2. Now, could we theoretically solve this if we wanted to? Like not using Picard's method. Could we find an actual solution? Okay, and by what method? Separable. Is that our only option? It's also linear. Yeah, so separable is probably easiest, but you could also do linear. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm telling us that we have to find y1, y2, y3, and y4. Okay, with that initial condition, that 0 is x naught, that 2 is y naught. So I'm going to write the general form of yn of x, and then we can use that to find each of the approximations. Okay, so that'll be y naught, which in our case is 2, plus the integral from 0 to x, so x naught to x, and then it's f of t. So this is what we're putting in. So it'll be y of n minus 1 of t minus 1 dt. So if I want y1 of x then, it'll be 2 plus 0 to x. Okay, if I plug a 1 in here, it's y0 of t which is what we start with. This 2, we get 2 minus 1 dt. So this will be 2 plus 0 to x dt. So hopefully we can see that y1 of x is going to be equal to 2 plus x. You guys follow me so far? Okay, so then y2 of x it's still that 2 plus integral from 0 to x. y of n minus 1 of t minus 1. This comes from the previous approximation. So you take that 2 plus t and then subtract 1. So you're just using the previous one. So here we get 2 plus 1 dt. This will be 2 plus 1 half t squared plus t from 0 to x. <coughs> so our y2 of x then, putting it in order, is going to be 1 half x squared plus x plus 2.
Okay, y3 of x then. It's 2 plus the integral from 0 to x. Use the previous approximation. So 1 half t squared plus t plus 2. Subtract 1. Okay. We get the idea of simplifying and integrating and everything, right? So are you okay if I just tell you what the result ends up being? Okay. Y3 of x ends up being 1 sixth x cubed plus 1 half x squared add x add 2. Okay, and then we need to find the fourth approximation. So this would be 2 plus the integral 0 to x. 1 6 t cubed plus 1 half t squared plus t plus 2 minus 1. I'm assuming that you all are comfortable simplifying, integrating, all that, in which case you get 1 over 24 x to the fourth plus 1 6 x cubed plus 1 half x squared add x add. Do you all notice that when you find this first approximation, it shows up in the second one? And that the second one shows up in the third one? That the third one shows up in the fourth one? Okay, that's gonna happen like 95% of the time. So that's a way for you to kind of check that things are going well as it should continue to come up the same way. Okay, so right now it kind of seems like why would we bother to do this? What help is this, particularly when we can solve right from the beginning? The idea is that you're not going to be able to solve the differential equation. We ultimately want to know, though, what happens if we were to keep going. So if we were to look at yn of x, we should be able to tell how it's going to start. So we're going to get that 2 plus x plus 1 half x squared plus 1 6 x to the third plus 1 over 24 x to the fourth, and it's going to keep going. It might be convenient to write this in a different way. I have 2 plus x. This third term is really x squared over 2 factorial. The next term is x cubed over 3 factorial. The last term is x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Which looks very close to a power series. If we pull out the 1, so if we split this 2 into 1 plus 1, we'll have 1 plus a power series then. It's the sum from k equals 0 to n of x to the k over k factorial. What happens if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of all of that? This will just be 1. This one? Well, not remember your Taylor series, Maclaurin series, all those. Any guesses? Well, that's like the most basic one. If you're going to remember any of them, you should remember that one. Oh. Which ones did you guys see a lot of in calculus? Sine, cosine, cosine and e to the x. So ultimately, this would be your solution. Now, wouldn't it be fun to solve this another way and make sure we get the same answer? Good, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> okay. So as a reminder, here was our problem. I'm going to solve this by separation. But as we said, you could also 
approach it as a linear differential equation. In this case, we get dy over y minus 1 equals dx. Integrate on both sides, we get natural log of y minus 1 equals x plus c1. Hopefully, you can see that we're end up going to end up getting c2 e to the x plus 1. If we plug that initial condition in, we get 2 equals C2 plus 1. So C2 equals 1. Ultimately, our solution is E to the X plus 1. Okay. Do we get the idea of Picard's method? 